Okay, so this video is going to be from the Unit 4A handout. Um, and so it's primarily on something called congruent triangles. So first let's define the word congruent. Okay, so congruent uh, really means two things. So let me write it out here. Congruent means same size and same shape. Okay, and uh, it's different from equals. Equals means uh, like has the same value as or the same number as. Same value, value as or same number as. And uh, it's different from equals, so congruent. The symbol for congruent, by the way, is an equals with a squiggle, and then this one's just equals, you know equals. So congruent is used for objects, right? Like a triangle or a segment. These are used for numbers. If equals is used for numbers. Okay, so. Um, Every year I ask students, how many parts are there to a triangle? And the instinct is to say three, but there are actually six parts to a triangle. Three sides, three angles. So uh, what I want to do is list off the six parts for the triangle on top, RST. So triangle RST. Right, so we've got the three sides, RS, ST, and RT. And then I've got the three angles, angle R, angle S, and then I can't call it angle T because I don't know which angle angle T would refer to. So I'm going to use three letters for T, RTS or STR, doesn't matter which one. So angle RTS. And then we've got the other triangle down below here, TUV. And what I want to do is I don't want to just list off the six, I want to match up the six. So um, it's kind of pretending that this, the two, two triangles are identical. Right, so RS right here goes with UV down here because they're congruent. Each one has one tick mark on it, so that means that they're the same length. So RS goes with UV. Okay. Uh, ST has two tick marks, so that's going to go with TU. RT doesn't have anything on it, so I'm assuming it's going to go with TV. And then we need to match up the angles. So angle R is going to go with angle V, and the reason is that R is between the side with one tick mark and the side with no tick marks. So that's what I'm going to do over here. U has one tick mark, or sorry, UV has one tick mark, TV has no tick marks, so R goes with angle V. And then if I look at angle S, S is between the one and two tick marks, so that's going to go with angle U. And then RTS is this one right here between two and nothing. And so that's the same as angle UTV. Right there. Okay. So these are the partners, right? These guys go together here. Okay. So in number three, the question refers to uh, labeling the triangles as congruent first. So assuming that the two triangles are identical to each other, the triangle on top and the triangle on the bottom, uh, then use that fact to help you prove that this and that are parallel. Okay, so what we're going to assume in this is that the given info is that the triangles are congruent. So I'm going to label the first triangle just RST. I can label it however I want. Now you're not allowed to label the second triangle however you want. Once you've picked the first one, RST, you have to put the second triangle's letters in the same type of order. So RST is start at R, you go to S, and then you go to T, which means I started here, I went along the side that had one tick mark, and then along the side that had two tick marks to, to complete labeling the triangle there. So in this one, I'm gonna have to start at V, go to U, and then go to T if I want to follow the same pattern of move along the one tick mark, then the two tick marks. 
So this one has to be VUT if I called the first one RST. So that's given. That's what we're assuming. Now the goal here is to prove in that RS is parallel to UV for whatever reason, right? So the reason is going to have something that gives me parallel lines. Okay? So one of the ways to get parallel lines would be if alternate interior angles are congruent. And if you look at the picture, angle S here and angle U there, they're alternate interior angles. And it turns out that I can say angle R is congruent to angle U. Okay, now the reason I can say that is I know in step one that the triangles are identical to each other, right? Every part of the triangle of RST matches up with every part of the triangle of VUT. So I know R, whoops, sorry, not R, S, I know that S and U have to be the same, right? So what I would write here is something like, well, the triangles are congruent. So their matching parts are congruent. Right? Now there's a better word for matching in this. It's corresponding parts. And you got to be a little bit careful. Corresponding means they're in the same kind of location, but they're not the same. They're not necessarily corresponding angles the way you think of parallel lines. So this one, what you could say is the triangles are congruent. So the corresponding parts are congruent. And these are corresponding angles with each other. Right? They go together. They're in the same type of location between the one and the two tick marks. Um, now, the, the formal way of writing this is actually this way. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And the, the abbreviation, because that's a lot to say, you use C for corresponding, P for parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC. You can use that to match up parts of congruent triangles. Okay? So at this point, now I know S is congruent to U. And so then I can finish off my proof and say, well, those are alternate interior angles. So they're going to make my lines parallel. So this will be my last step. And I can say alternate interior angles that are congruent give me parallel lines. Okay? So let's go on to four here. So four, how many different letter, three letter combos can you make using only A's and S's? All right, so I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna go alphabetically. A, 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 right? Then the next one, I'm not allowed to use anything with a B or C or D, just A's and S's. So the next, you know, fake word that I could form would be A, A, S, and then it would be A, S, A. And then, let's see, A, yes, I realize that that says A, S, S. And then, uh, let's see, what's next? We could do S, A, A. And then we could do S, A, S. And then we could do S, S, A. And then we could do S, 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 right there. Now, there are only eight, and uh, if you have ever studied ways of getting combinations, you can say, well, I've got a three letter word here. How many different letters could I put here? In this case, I only get two letters that I can put there. How many letters could I put here? Well, I've got, it's an A or an S again, so two letters there. And how many letters here? Two more. And it turns out that the trick here is to multiply. So I get eight total. And if you're wondering why you multiply them, think about it like a tree diagram. My first letter is either A or S. And then my second letter is either A or S. Or A or S, right? And then my third letter, again, A or S, A or S, A or S, A or S. So like this would be the first word and this would be the second word. So you can kind of go down the tree and figure out all the different words. And notice each time I'm doubling the amount that I have. So it's times two times two more, right? Okay, so there are eight total and here are the eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to these 
because you can actually use somehow these three letter combos to help you prove that triangles are congruent. So we'll take a look here. So in number five here, we're going to look at what SSS means, side, side, side. Okay. So in this problem, we're supposed to find all, all the length of all the sides of the triangles down here. So one of the sides should be easy. AC, it goes straight across. It goes from negative 6, 1 to 4, 1. When you go straight across left and right, only the x's change. And they went from negative 6 to 4. So this is 10 units across. So I'm going to say AC equals 10. So let's find AB. So I'm going to build a little slope triangle here right there. And then when I go up and down, the y's change. So it's going from 1 to 7. So that's a distance of 6. And then when I go left to right, the x's change. It goes from negative 6 to 1. So negative 6 to positive 1. Negative 6 to 0 is 6. And then I got to go one more. So that's 7. So then segment AB is going to be 6 squared plus 7 squared. I'm using Pythagorean theorem here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared equals c squared. And so that that's going to be 36 plus 49 equals c squared. And that'll be 85 equals c squared. So then I take the square root. And c is really capital AB is root 85. So let me label this as root 85. And then bc, I'll build a little slope triangle right here using just horizontal and vertical lines. And going from 1 to 4, it's 3 across. And going from 7 to 1, it's 6 down. And so now I can do 3 squared plus 6 squared equals bc squared. Or actually, I'll just call it little c for now. And then that's going to be 9 plus 36 equals little c squared. So that's root 45 equals little c. And root 45 is really capital BC, that segment right there. So there are my three lengths for the purple triangle, root 45. Okay, let's do the same thing over here with the, I guess that's orangey colored triangle. So I'll start with JL. So I'm going to go straight up, straight across. That's a right triangle because I just used vertical and horizontal lines. And when I go up, it's going from negative 2 to positive 7, so it's up 2 and then up seven more, so up a total of nine. And then going across, it's six to eight, so that's just two across. So then JL here, JL, uh, oh, I'll do it like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, so nine squared plus two squared equals C squared. So that's 81 plus four, which is 85 equals C squared. So C is root 85. And root 85 is the same thing as JL. So this side right here, root 85. Okay, let's look at LK. By the way, I'm just going to draw on the last slope triangle too, because it's like building a rectangle around the big triangle. Okay, so let's see. Um, LK goes from 8 to 14 across, so that's 6. And then 7 to 4 down, so that's 3. So if I looked at this, this would be 6 squared plus 3 squared equals LK squared. But I've already done that same exact work right here. So I know that LK is going to end up being root 45. So I'm not going to bother redoing the same calculations. And then the last one, KJ, let's see, it's down from 4 to negative 2. So it's 4 and then 2 more. So that's going to be 6 down. And then across, it's 6 to 14, which is 8 across. So now I'm going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. That's going to be 36 plus 64 equals c squared. So that's 100 equals c squared. If you take the square root, you get 10. And 10 is really jk. Oh, and then this one was root 45. Now if you notice here, the root 85s 
are the same. So I'm going to put one tick mark on each of those. The root 45s are the same. So I'm going to put two tick marks to show those guys are the same. And then the 10s are the same too. So I'm going to put three tick marks on those. Three tick marks on those. So what we actually have here is all three sides of ABC are the same as all three sides of JLK. Right? Now, up here it says this. When the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Okay, that's called SSS. Side, side, side. It, now, the way to read the S's, the sides, when I write side here, that doesn't mean one side. It actually means a pair of sides match up, and then another pair of sides match up, and the third pair of sides match up. And if that's true, then, then the two triangles are congruent. So what I would write in a proof, like if this were a proof, you prove, we prove that AB was the same as J, JL. We prove that, or we'll say congruent. We prove that BC was the same as uh, LK. And we prove that AC was the same as JK. And that's because of, well, we did the calculations. Calculations. That's an exclamation point, not a question mark. So then what happens is I've matched up one pair of sides. I've matched up another pair of sides. I've matched up a third pair of sides. Once I've matched up all three pairs of sides, I can put over here that one triangle is congruent to the other triangle because of SSS. I've matched up all three pairs of sides. So then you can label the first triangle however you want, ABC, right? But if I call it ABC, then the second triangle has to be labeled the same sort of way. The corresponding sides have to get matched up. So ABC goes from A to B to C, which is along the root 85, then the root 45. So this one would have to go JLK right there, JLK. Right, so this is kind of the key here is if you've paired up all three sides with another triangle's three sides, then you can say that the two triangles are congruent because of something called SSS. I've matched up all three pairs of sides. Okay? So then, in uh, number six, it says, what can you say about the sizes of angles ACB, right here, and angles JKL, right here? Okay, well, notice, we already know the two triangles are identical, right? They're already congruent. So, if you notice right here, this, this angle is between the root 45 and the 10, and this angle is also between the root 45 and the 10. So they're matching angles, right? So, up here, remember we said, if you know two triangles are already congruent, then you can match up other parts of them using this idea, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's if you already have congruent triangles, then you use CPCTC to match up more of them, more parts of them. So down here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little mini proof, right? So statements, reasons. We already know ABC is congruent to J. L, K, because of side, side, side. So then after you have the congruent triangles, now we've already matched up all the sides, so I'm not going to match up more sides. What I am going to do is match up my angles. This angle with this angle, because they go together. So angle A, C, B is congruent to angle J, K, L, because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? Or, you know, I know the triangles are congruent, so the matching parts are congruent, right? And if you wanted to use the abbreviation, it's CPCTC. It's a, it allows you to match up parts of triangles that are already congruent. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here. SSS is something that helps us prove triangles are congruent. So I'm going to circle that one. This one's a good one. Now, it turns out not all of these can be used to prove triangles are congruent. So we're going to work our way over the next couple days through all of these and see which ones help and which ones don't. Okay, let's go back down here. SAS, side angle side. 
Okay, so the way that this works is, I would, the, the example is everybody, if I told everybody, make a triangle that's got an eight centimeter side and a six centimeter side, and then the key is I lock in the angle between the two sides with 30 degrees. So you've got an eight centimeter triangle, or eight centimeter side, and a six centimeter side coming out of it. But the fact is that the six centimeter side has to form a 30 degree angle right here. Can't be bigger, can't be smaller, must be 30. And this side has to be six, right? So if everybody had to do this, the question is, and then form a triangle with what you had, would everyone get a triangle that looks the same? And so maybe, maybe you don't do it like that. Maybe you have your eight here and your six is coming out like this. So eight here, six here, 30 here. And the question is, well, could we still form the same triangle? And it turns out, well, you only have one way to connect these two sides. You only have one way to connect these two sides. And it turns out if I take this triangle and I rotate it a little bit and possibly, in this case, I'd have to flip it over to, like I'd actually have to flip the triangle over to the other side, but it would end up fitting right on top of this triangle. Uh, and you can kind of think about it. If the six and the eight are locked into place and the 30 forces it to be a certain angle between them, then that forces this side to get locked in too. There's no other type of side you could get there. So um, all the triangles would be congruent, right? All the triangles would be congruent. Now, if you think about it, what I'm telling you is an example of something called the SAS postulate. So that says, now, now we learned that if all three sides match up, then the triangles are congruent. This is another way to prove triangles are congruent. Show that this side and this side are the same. Show that this side and that side, so two pairs of sides match up, but instead of the third pair of sides, you also match up the angle in between the two sides that you know. Notice the A is in between here, so it's side, angle, side, not SSA, because the angle is touching both sides that I know, so the A goes in the middle, right? Okay, so um, a, a more general diagram would be like this. So let's say you have a triangle here, and then some triangle over here. And what you've done is you've proven that, so I'll like A, B, C, D, E, F. So let's say that you've proven that A, C, and D, E are congruent. And let's say that you prove B, C, and uh, I don't know, uh, E, F are congruent. Okay, so right now you've got A, C goes with D, E. So that's one pair of sides. You've got B, C goes with E, F. That's another pair of sides. And if you wanted to use SAS, you'd have to show that the angle between these two sides, so angle C, not B or A, it's got to be touching both sides, goes with angle E right there because that's also touching both sides. So if we needed the angle in between, it would have to be angle C goes with angle E. And so if you knew all this for whatever reason, so you figured it out for whatever reason, Right. Then the next line could be, so triangle ACB, if I call the first one ACB, goes one tick mark, curve, two tick marks. Then this one would be DEF. And now instead of SSS, we can say SAS. I've matched up a pair of sides, another pair of sides, and the pair of angles that are in between them. Okay? So that's how SAS works. So I'm going to come back up here to number four and circle SAS. That one also works. Thankfully, not all of these work. It turns out only four of them work uh, for proving triangles are congruent and the other four don't essentially. So uh, five work. So we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, so we've looked at SSS. We've looked at SAS. Let's look at AAA. Angle, angle, angle. That means pair up one pair of angles between two triangles, a second pair of angles between two triangles, a third pair of angles between two triangles. So that means that all three angles of one triangle should be the same as all three angles in another triangle. But the question is, 
this doesn't prove the triangles are congruent, why not? Right? Well, let me draw one. I'll draw a triangle that's got a 90 degree angle and then a 60 and a 30. Right? Well, I can draw another triangle that's got those same angle measurements, but it's not exactly the same as this triangle, right? It wouldn't fit right on top of it. And really all you have to do is draw a bigger version of it. 60 here, 30 there. Well, these guys aren't identical. This one's obviously bigger on the right side. So uh, <clears throat> now when you have two triangles where all the angles match up, they're not congruent, but they are called similar. So the triangles are similar, but not congruent. Oop. So it turns out that later on, when we study similar triangles, we'll be able to use something like AAA to show, oh, look, the triangles are similar. But it's not enough to show that the triangles are congruent. So I'm going to come back up here and cross off AAA. That one does not work for proving triangles are congruent. Okay. So number nine is a proof and uh, it said prove me. So we're going to prove it. <laughs> so let's see here. Given AC bisects BAD. Okay. Then we also know AB is going to be congruent to AD. And then we have to prove that the two small triangles are congruent first. So let's do that. So first step, AC bisects angle BAD. And that's given. Oh, by the way, to prove two small triangles are congruent, we're either going to go for SSS or SAS. Those are two ways that we know so far to get congruent triangles. Okay. So AC bisects BAD. Well, what does that do for us? The big angle on top is bisected. So that means that this angle and this angle are congruent. Now to save some time, I'm just going to put numbers here. One and two. So angle one is congruent to angle two uh, because, well, we know that we had a bisector. That's what a bisector does. It's the definition of an angle bisector. Okay, and notice notice what that does. I've paired up a pair of angles between my two triangles. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these two steps as a chunk and say, look, I got a pair of angles out of that. Okay, so let's look at something else now. We've paired up some angles. We also know AB is the same as AD. That's helpful. So AB is congruent to AD is given. Now that's helpful because now what we've done is we've paired up, here I'll use red, it's easier to see. We've paired up one side from this triangle with one side from that triangle. So I'm going to put an S here because we paired up some sides. All right, let's take a look at fourth step. So really what I've got right now is a side and an angle. My hope is that I can get another side matched up, right? Because I already have an angle, so I'm probably not going for SSS. Okay. Well, what side it matches up between the two triangles? You might say, well, BC looks like it's the same length as CD. But can I prove that? I don't know. I don't know what reason I would use to say BC equals CD unless I knew C was like the midpoint down there. So I'm not going to go for those. The only other side of the two triangles is the one that they share, AC, right? The AC from this triangle is the same as the AC from that triangle. So I'm going to say that. So AC from one triangle is the same as AC from the other triangle. And since it's something equals itself, that's reflexive. So I'm going to mark it with two tick marks in this picture, right? AC equals itself. And this gives me another pair of sides that are matched up. Now I realize in the proof, it says angle side side, right? ASS, which we have not discussed whether or not that works, but that's not, 
the, this proof doesn't have to go in this order. Notice step three here is totally independent from steps one and two, and step four is also independent. So these chunks, these three chunks, could be rearranged however you want. So if you wanted to, you could put step three first, and then it would say SAS. What you have to do to figure out what reason you're using is look at the picture, right? If you look at the picture, I've got a side, another side, and the angle in between them. And over here, I've got the same deal. A side, another side, and the angle in between them. So really what we've got is right here, I've got that the triangles are congruent. So if I call the first one BAC, the second one is going to have to be DAC to match up the right sides together. And the reason is because I've got side, angle, side match, matching. Right. Okay, so that's that part. Then the next part says prove that ACB is congruent to ACD. Well, here's ACB and here's ACD. Now, I already know that triangles are completely congruent to each other. They're identical, right? Well, if they're identical, then I can match up any parts that I want between them that go together. Well, these guys go together. They're corresponding parts of congruent triangles, right? So what I'm going to write down here is, uh, let me, actually, I'll do like a new chunk to the proof here. Okay, so step six, I'm going to say angle ACB is congruent to angle ACD because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And if they, if so they're matching parts of two triangles I know are identical, so those parts are congruent, right? Which is CPCPC. You use it after you get congruent triangles. And you use it to say parts of those triangles have to be the same. Okay? So then there's one last thing here. It says prove that AC is perpendicular to BD. AC is perpendicular to BD. Now, this one goes back to a unit 2 reason. And it turns out we can go straight to it now. So here we've got AC is perpendicular to BD. And if you look at the picture, only two lines form these congruent adjacent angles right there, right? So um, there's a theorem that says if two lines form congruent adjacent angles, then the lines are perpendicular, right? You might remember that one. So that's how this works. Now, I want to mention something about the structure of these proofs, because pretty much every major proof we're going to do for now follows this structure. We're aiming for congruent triangles, right? congruent triangles. And the way that we can do it so far is by using SSS or SAS, and possibly other ones, which we'll figure out soon, not AAA, right? Which means in the part above it, in this part, you're aiming to match up S's, sides, and angles between the two triangles. Okay, once you have that, if, if the goal is not just to get congruent triangles but get something else, then this step is always going to be matching up, match up, corresponding parts of the triangles. of the congruent triangles, parts that you haven't already matched up. So this is going to be CPCTC. And then depending on the proof, you might use that info, use previous step to get new info for whatever reason. New info. Okay, so the structure of a lot of the proofs we're going to do will be match up sides and angles between the two triangles to get SSS, SAS, or whatever else we figure out. And that'll give you identical triangles. Then once you have the identical triangles, whatever you haven't already matched up, you can match up using CPCTC. And then maybe matching that up gives you something else like perpendicular lines or parallel lines or a bisector or something like that. Okay, so that's how this is going to work. All right. 
Uh, so on the last page here, there's one other postulate that we'll talk about. Angle, side, angle. So this one also is, a th so we've got SSS, we've got SAS. Now it turns out you can also use ASA to show the two triangles are congruent. The way that one works, I'll draw a little picture right here, is if I prove one pair of angles match up, a second pair of angles match up, so that's the A here and the A there, one pair, two pairs, and the side in between the two angles. So it can't be this side and this side. It's got to be the one touching, whoa, got to be the one touching both angles. So it has to be this side and this side. If I can match up in both triangles that angle side angle sort of pattern, then I can say the two triangles are congruent. So I'll label these A, B, C, D, E, F. So in a little proof, if somehow you got that angle A goes with angle C, if you got A, B goes with D, E, and you got angle B goes with angle E, then you have A, Oh, then you have, for whatever reasons, you know, maybe it's all given. Then the next step could be triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because of angle, side, angle. So now we've got one extra reason that works here. So I'm going to go back up to the top here, and I'm going to circle angle, side, angle, ASA, right there. So now we have three things that work and one thing that doesn't. And then later on, we'll discuss which of the remaining four work and don't. Okay, so let me come back down here. <clears throat> okay, so let's practice this. Let's see which triangles in A through F are congruent and which ones aren't. Or which ones we can't figure out are congruent. All right. So, in the first one, oh, hold on one second. Okay, so in the first one, uh, let's see, we've got A, B, C, D, E, uh, D, E, F. And notice I've got one pair of sides matched up. Then I've got a pair of angles matched up. And I've got another pair of sides matched up. And they're both matched up where the angle is in between the two sides. So that's going to be side, angle, side, which means the two triangles are congruent. So I can say triangle A, B, C is congruent. You can label the first one however you want. You just have to make sure the second one matches those letters. So A, B, C goes along one tick mark, right angle, two tick marks. So this one would have to be D, F, E. And the reason would be side, angle, side. In part B, well, I've got these two sides match up with those two sides, but that's it. I've got nothing else going on here. So all I can do here is say... Not enough info, because I only have two S's, not three. So not enough info for no congruence can be determined. Okay, let's look at C. <clears throat> so in C, I've got this side matches up with that side. So I've got an S. I've got these two angles match up, so I have an A. And then there's one more thing that matches up. It's the line right down the middle. Right? So I also have another pair of sides match up between the two triangles. And if you look at the picture, the angle is between the two sides that match up in both cases. So I can say the triangles are congruent. So if I call the first one G-H-I, the second one is going to be G-J-I. And the reason is going to be because side angle side says that that's okay. <clears throat> okay, let's look at D. So D, nothing's really labeled as congruent, but I've got some parallel lines here. So if you look at this line and this line, well, they form alternate interior angles right here and here. So those angles are congruent. And if I look at this line and this line that are parallel, they also form another pair of alternate interior angles that are congruent. Okay, so right now I've got two angles from one triangle matched up with two angles from another, so I have two A's. Well, AAA doesn't work, so it doesn't matter if I match up the third pair or not. 
but I've got this side that's reflexive right here, QT. So I also have a pair of sides. Now, I, this is what I have, but not necessarily in that order. If you look at just one triangle here, I've got an angle, another angle, and a side in between, and the same deal for this one down here. So if I call the first, let's call the bottom triangle RTQ, then that's going to match up with, let's see here, RTQ goes no curves, one curve, two curves. So the SQT. And the reason would be I have two angles in the side in between, ASA. Okay, if we look at E, I've got one pair of sides matched up, one pair of angles matched up, and then the only other thing I can match up is this reflexive side right here. Notice this side is between the side I know and the angle I know, so I have that, SSA. Well, SSA is not one of these three that we've talked about. So this one is not enough info, no congruence can be determined. Okay, and then there's part F down here, right? SSA doesn't work. So down here, I've got these two guys are congruent. I can figure out that the vertical angles are congruent. And then I've got two angles of this triangle match it with two angles from that triangle. So you actually can figure out that the third angles would have to be congruent too. Now, if I leave this off, what I have is two angles and a side not between them. I've got AAS. And same deal in this triangle, AAS, right? Um, but we haven't discussed whether or not AAS works. But if I match up the third pair of angles, right, and ignore these guys for now, then really what you have is two angles with a side in between and the same two angles with another side in between in the other triangle. So I've got ASA, which is good. That works. So I can say triangle, if I call it like X, Y, Z, then that goes three curves, one curve, two curves. So three, one, two, that would go with A, B, Z. And then the reason would be angle side. Okay, so that's how that works. I hope that helps a little bit. I realize this is a long video, but they won't be quite this long for the rest of the unit. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.